Okay, today's daf is very small daf, but uh, just to uh, just discuss one issue that we have to know is that I just put up, put up on the screen over here a picture of a chalitza shoe, the way it's done, bizman azeh. I call it a chalitza shoe because in the Talmud, it says you should use a sandal, not a shoe. Shoe is only uh, expo facto, It's but really you should use a sandal. But because we don't know exactly how the sandals looked at the time of the Talmud, so we adapted the shoe, uh, the shoe version. And therefore, uh, the shoe is what we use, but it's not a shoe that you normally would see. It's a shoe that, uh, that obeys every detail that the Gemara requires. The number one requirement is that it has to be securely fastened onto the man's leg. And therefore, in addition to, to buckles, they, would also, they have these straps that go around uh, the leg. And I don't think the Yavam wears socks when he's, you know, before the chalitza, because we want the shoe to be directly onto the foot. In addition to that, the strap is made out of leather. The shoe is made out of leather. The stitching is done on the side. I think they, they tie it with flax. But the sole, the most important part, the sole has to be very, very hard, not soft. Uh, so it's a funny type of shoe. And therefore, the lady that does all this has a real has to work hard to untie the untie the the shoe, so that's uh, something to uh, know what's what's actually being done. Okay, with Abish's help, we're starting Daf Kuf Dalet. So uh, the mission is also discussing over here called uh, um, details on the mitzvah of chalitza. So we know that chalitza is a double is is like is like you know din tyrus let's say you have a, a lawsuit with somebody a din torah monetary things so the halachi is that it has to be done during the day you can't start a din torah at night it has to be started during the day but the final argument it could go into the night you know if they needed time to decide so then the gemar din could be at night the beginning of the din has to be during the daytime so in the chalitza is a type of din, okay? You have to know. Chalitza is a type of din. Why? Because there's money on stake. Because after she she does the chalitza, she can collect her suba from the first husband. So here we are. The Mishnah over here. Let's get it big. So the Mishnah discusses chalitza balayla. If you do chalitza at night, chalitza kishera, the chalitza is kosher. So the Tanakhama holds, chalitza done at night is kosher. Now we'll we have to understand that. Why is it kosher? Uh, one would think that chalitza has to do with money, monetary things, and therefore it can be done. It can be, it can has to be done during the daytime. So we're going to discuss that in the Gemara. Rab Loza Rab Loza says any if the chalitza is done at night, it's possible. It's not kosher. Bismo. What does bismo mean? If she pulled off the left shoe of the yavam. Right, you're supposed to pull off the right shoe. She pulled off the left shoe. Chalitza say pesula. The chalitza is pasul. Rablaza machshe. Rablaza says the opposite. Rablaza is lenient. He says it's kosher, but the evet if you did with the right foot, with the with the left foot. So let's get back to the discussion of chalitza balayla. Lema, would you say b'halkami palgi? This is the argument. The argument is like this: that there is an opinion that holds that everybody holds that you can do. The beginning of a din Torah of monetary things, you could do it, you have to start it during the daytime. But there's an opinion that holds that only the even the completion of that din Torah has to be completed during the daytime. And some hold you can complete it at night. So this would be the argument of, of the Mishnah. One holds Khalitz's Shera if it's done at night. What does that mean? And one holds his puzzle. This is the Machlaikis. The Mar Sova. The one that holds that chalitza is possible at night is who is that? Rabbi Lazar. He holds makshinim rivim linigoyim. We have a, a, a hekish that compares uh, monetary court cases to nagoyim, to, to plagues. When a coin paskins on a nega, it has to be done during the daytime. So all judgments that have to do lawsuits, monetary cases have to be done only during the day. That's why chalitza, which is a type of monetary din, has to be done only during the daytime. Umar Sova, but the Tanakama holds who holds its kosher at night. 
he holds loy makshin and rivim lenegoim. He says you don't compare uh, monetary cases to negoim, but rather you have another source, another source of where you know that a din Torah, monetary din Torahs, can be started has to be has to be done during the daytime. But there is a pasuk that says the shaftu as ha'am b'chol eis that monetary stuff can be done at any time. So with that Monday on holes, you can start it during the daytime, but you must end, you can end it at nighttime. If, if it, it drags into the night, you can finish the case at night. So that's why he holds Chaltz and Belilas, because he holds that the Chalitza is type of Gemar Din. It's called the end of the Din. And therefore, because right away after, there's nothing else to do. After Chalitza, collect your money. So therefore, it can be done at night. That's what the Gemara held right now in the half a minute. So the Gemara says, Loi, it's not so. The Kuli Ama, everybody holds, Loi Makshinin Rivim Lenegan. Nobody holds of this heckish that uh, monetary cases is like nega, which can only be done during the daytime. Everybody holds that there that you can, you must start during the daytime, but it can be finished at night. The question is, uh, why? Because the E Makshinin, if you did compare Rivim Lenegan, I feel like then you must hold that you can't complete the din Torah at night. And but we have Stam Mishnayis that say that you know Gemar Din could be done at Lila, that finishing up the case could be done at night time. So everybody holds that really, really a monetary case, you have to start during the daytime, but you have the option to finish it up at night. So what's the argument by Khalitza? Marsova, this is the argument, Marsova. Chalitza ketchilas adin dami. Chalitza, the the discussion of chalitza is like the beginning of a monetary case, which means that it has to be only done during the daytime. You can't do it at nighttime because just like when you start a monetary case, it has to be done during the daytime. So also chalitza has to be done during the daytime. Umar sova, but Rabbi the Chachamim holds chalitza kegmar din damia. Chalitza is like the end of a of a case. And therefore, at the end of the case, you can do it at night. So chalitza can be also done at night because right after chalitza, you collect your money. So it's almost like at the end of a case. And that just explains the machlekes between Mloza and the Tanakama of why a chalitza balayla, doing chalitza at night, is a kosher or not. Says the Gemara story. Rabbi Barchia Ketois Va'a. Rabbi Barchia from Ketois. Ovid Uvda. He made a chalitza. And he did three things which were strange. He made the chalitza. He oversaw a chalitza. Number one is bemuk, a slipper, a slipper not made of leather. You see, I, I pointed out the picture of the of the of the shoe, but it's made of leather, obviously. But here he did it without a leather shoe. and he didn't even have three people present. He did it by himself. Ubalayla, he did it at night. Wow. Amar Shmuel, so Shmuel said about Rabbi Bachia, Kama Rav Guvra de Ovid ki chichudai. This. The, he must be a very, he holds on himself as a big uh, Paisik, that he paskins always like the Yachid, like the lone opinion. So by doing all these three things, Muk, Yechidi, and Laila, he must, he must have held that you, the uh, Halachi is like the, that, like, the, like the lone opinion of these things. So Gemara says, my Kashya, what if Shmuel had difficulty with Rabbah? Inmuk, if he was questioning why he was using a slipper that's not made of leather, stamatanya. We have a brisa, an anonymous brisa, which seems to be that everybody holds that that the, the that the unanimous opinion is that you could use a muk, a non uh, a non leather a non leather shoe. Elila, if the question was why he did it at night, was Shmuel bothered by that? Stamatanya. With our star Mishnah, if you look at our Mishnah. Our mission is Tanakama, who's unanimous, right? Anonymous, which is unanimous. That means most Chachamim held that way, that Belayla, it's kosher. So Shmuel should not have been bothered by that Rabbah, Barchia, did a chalitza at night. So what was Shmuel bothered by? Ela Yechidi. He was bothered by uh, the fact that Rabbah did this chalitza, overseeing it by himself, Kokashile. Because Heche Avi Yechidi. How did he do it by himself? Only one opinion holds that a chalitza done with the one overseer is kosher. We know, and we discussed this last week, that it's either three or five, but three at least. It's now we learned in the Mishnah. 
we have the Mishnah, and we're going to learn this Mishnah later on today, that you have two or three people, they're overseeing it, right? The Nimtza Echid Mehem Koraiv Apostle. And one of the uh, of the Dayanim turned out to be a relative to the others. Apostle. Or he was a person who's not kosher to be a Dayan. Either he's a gambler. We know that if you're a gambler, you can't be a, a witness or a Dayan, a judge. Or even let's say we, we learned that if you're a Ger or if you're if you're not Jewish, if you weren't born Jewish, you can't be a Dayan either. So chalitza se psula. The chalitza is posel because you need three people. According to the Tanakhama, you actually need three kosher dayana. Ha, the Rab Shimon, the Rab Yechonan Sadler, the Machshirim, Shimon, the Rab Yechonan Sadler, a machsher, and basically they machsh, they make it kosher, even if there was just one dayan over there, one judge can do it. And they have a umaisa, and, the, and it's, there's a story that they bring down. The echot shecholatz beinoy leveino the base ho asurim. It was one person that gave a chalitza to his Yabama. It was a private affair, and he did it in jail. Nobody, there was no judges there, just maybe, you know, uh, another cellmate that observed. And this story came to Rabbi Kiva, who was also in jail, very important. He was also in jail at the same time. Rabbi Kiva, he says it's a kosher chalitza. So we see, the uh, Amar Rav Yosef Barbad Yumi, Ein Halacha We don't pass in like that. Uh, opinion though, that pair of Shimon and Rabbi Yechonim and Sandler that say that that you could use one person as an overseer for a uh, chalitza because we don't paskin like that. We actually need, like the unanimous opinion is, that you need at least three. So therefore, that's what Shmuel was all upset at this Rabbi Barichia who who did a chalitza He did it all by himself. So that's what he was upset about. The Iba Yisema. If you want, I can tell you that Rabbi Shmuel. Shmuel was very upset that he used a mook and that he used a, he did it at night because Shmuel was very upset. It's only one opinion that holds the, all the matters that Rabbi did. The Tanya we learned in Abraisa, Rabbi Shmuel, Rabbi Yaisi, Ani Reisi Rabbi Shmuel ben Elisha. I saw the great Tana, Rabbi Shmuel ben Elisha. Shecholatz, he did a chalitza, b'muk, with a slipper, b'yechidi, by himself, b'layla, by night. So it's only Rabbi Shmuel ben Elisha, who was a great, the Tana, he did that way, but most Tanaim would disagree with him and hold that you can't, you shouldn't do it at night, you shouldn't do it alone, and you should use a leather shoe. Now the Gemara says, we learned in the next, the next part of the mission, Bismarck, if you use the left shoe, chalitza, so is not kosher. And some say it is kosher. My time at the Rabbana, why the Rabbana hold is not kosher? Amaula, Yafin and Regal, Regal, Mimitsroira. We learn Regal, Regal, that it says by the foot, by, by Yavama, to the foot that it says by Mitsora. Malahan, do you mean? Just like by Mitsora, when you kosher him, when you, put the, when you put the blood and you put the oil on him, it's on his right uh, foot. Afkan, you mean? So the, that also the Regal that it says by Chalitza, it means his right foot. So it's uh, so Rab Lazar. So the it comes out, Rab Lazar did not have this Gezei Shava, and therefore he holds the left is okay. So the Gemara asks, Rab Lazar, Lo Yalaf Regal Regal Mi Mitzara. Rab Lazar did not learn Regal Regal from Mitzara, and, and because of that, he said you could use the left foot. But Tanya, we learned in the Brisa, Rab Lazar, Rab Lazar says he does use Menayin Leretzia Shiba Oizin Hayamanus. Rabbi Lazar, I wanted to know, how do you know the drilling of the ear of the Eved, of the slave, the Jewish slave, that wants to stay after six years by his master? He doesn't want to go home. So the, the Pasuk says you drill his ears and then he can stay until Yovel. So how do you know you use the right ear to drill? So the Pasuk says, Nemakan Oizen. There's a Pasuk that says, by, 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 uh, by the Eved, Ear, the Namalahalan Oizen, and it says by Mitsora the ear, Malahalan Yamin, just by the Mitsora it means the right ear, Afkan Yamin, so also by by the by the Eved, it also means the right ear. So what do you see from here? Rabbi Lazar does have this Kazeir Shava to Mitsora. So if that's the case, then why would he say that the left uh, foot is kosher? We have Kazeir Shava that you should use the right foot. You have to turn around the opinions. And therefore, Ablaza actually said, no, the left foot is not kosher. And it's only the Chachamim who said the left foot is kosher. Rava, Rava says, You don't have to turn it around. And the reason is, 
The oizen oizen, the ear ear gezeira shava is a good gezeira shava. The ear ear that it says by by from Evan the slave to the ear of Mitzorah, those it's a solid gezeira shava. You can't ask any questions about that, and therefore the Mitzorah you must use the right ear because the ex is the word oizen ear is extra by the word uh, by the slave, and it's the word oizen is extra by the word by Mitzorah. It didn't have to say the word oizen; it's an extra word, so you can dash an gezeira shava, no questions asked. The rega regel roy mufnet. The regel that it says by by uh, by Yavam, and the regal that it says by Mitzorah are not are not open. In other words, the regal that's written, uh, the written over there, it's it's not extra, and therefore and therefore you could ask a question. And in other words, you can say that yes, you have a Gzeir Shava, but maybe it's not a pure Gzeir Shava, and therefore if you have a question, you can knock away the the law that you learned from that Gzeir Shava. So the Gemara says, my What kind of questions are you going to ask if it's not extra? So the Gemara says, Ikel I'll tell you why. I could ask. I could ask you, and ask, tell you that Mitzora needs to use the right foot because Mala Mitzora Shekain Torn Eretz Eres Ve'ezos Nitolas. They have other extra dinim that are required by a Mitzora that make Mitzora. Uh, we maybe the Torah was much more. Meduyekes means that much more uh, stricter that you need to use the right foot because the Mitzora has other halachas that the Torah is strict about. But maybe by Yavama, the Torah is not as strict and therefore you could use, uh, if you don't want to use the right foot or if it's not available, you could use the left foot. And that's why Reb Loza holds the left foot is kosher. No Mishnah. Just to bring up the Pesukim over here, I want to point out to you, so you should be aware, that there are three steps for a Chalitza. If you look at the Pasuk over here, which says, you go, the Yavama goes to the Bezdin. Here's a key word, Amra. She has to say, She has to say these words, uh, that my Yavam doesn't want to marry me. And therefore, we're going to have to, so that's called Kriya, when she has to read these words. And then they call, the Karelai Zikni, they call the Yavam. And he has to say it also. The Omar means he has to say it. So that's called Kriya. She has to say words and she has and he has to say things. Then they do the taking off of the Yavam. Yavama takes off the Yavam shoe. Okay. And spits before him. So now that's called Chalitza. And then there's called spitting. And then there's a third time she has to say, this should be done to a person to, who doesn't want to build the house of his brother. So she has to say three times. So there are three things you need. Kriya, uh, which is saying in Hebrew those words, that's written in the Chumash. Chalitza, taking off the shoe, spitting. So the Mishnah is discussing what is uh, most important over here. Let's say you leave out a step. Chalitza over Akaka, says the Mishnah. You took off the shoe, you spit. Avalai Kara, you didn't read the Psukim. You know, everybody was silent. Chalitza, the Chalitza is kosher. Kara Virakaka, but if you did read what's in the Chumash, you did the spitting, the woman did the spitting, Avaloi Chalitza, she didn't take off the shoe. Chalitza, Pesula, the Chalitza is possible. In other words, you have to redo the Chalitza, she has to take off the shoe, do the whole process again. But it, it, once you did such a, a, a not kosher Chalitza, Yavim is off the table. That's a very important point. When we say Chalitza, Pesula, it's not like it's not a Chalitza. It's a Chalitza that no other brother can now decide he wants to be Miyabim, this woman. Uh, Yibim is off the table, but you have to redo the Chalitza. Chalitza the Kara, you did the Chalitza, and you did the creeding. Avulah Yerakaka, you didn't spit. So is spitting important? Rabbi Lazo Oyme Chalitza Se Psula, it's not a kosher Chalitza, you have to redo it. Rabbi Kiva Oyme Chalitza Se Kishera, spitting is is uh, is not is not as Ma'akev. Um, it doesn't, uh, it's, of course it's needed, but if you didn't do it, the Chalitza is kosher if you didn't do the spit. We go to Ahmed Bey's. Rab Laza says, but wait a second. The Pasuk says, asa. you have to follow instructions. Kocha, this is the way it should be done. Kol Anything that has that as an action that has to be done. And therefore, chalitza, taking off the shoe, spitting are action, action things that you're doing in this process. And therefore, if it's not done, the chalitza is upheld. It's not, it's not kosher. So Amalai Rabbi Kiva, Rabbi Kiva says, no, Misham Raya, that's your proof. 
The Pasuk is only saying that the things that are done to the man himself, for example, kol dava shuma sabish, anything that is done to the, to the person himself, like taking off a shoe, that you must do. There's no way around that. But spitting is not something you're doing to the man. It's doing in the vicinity of the man. She spits around his area. So therefore, according to Abla, according to Rabbi Kiva, that does not ma'akev, that doesn't invalidate the Khalitza. The Nishna continues. Let's say she a woman falls to Yibim, but she's falling to her 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 her, her Yavam, who's not so hundred percent. He's not normal. How is in the time of Chazal, if someone was born deaf and couldn't speak, actually, he was considered to be an imbecile. So what happens if she fell to Yibim to this person, Hacherish, an imbecile, like a, a deaf mute? Shenachlatz, that he did the chalitza. Okay, so then, so then it's not kosher because uh, it's not kosher, but it does, it has a din that no yibam is off the table. So if one of the brothers who's a cherish did the chalitza, got chalitza, then, then yibam is off the table. But it's a chalitza psula, we're going to learn. Bacharishis, shecholza. Here's another problem. She was an imbecile. So really, when she was married to the, to the brother that died, it was really a kedushin de rabbanam. So chalitza doesn't work over here because chalitza needs, you have to have brains to do chalitza. You have to have kavana. And therefore, the chalitza wouldn't work. So the only way out of this lady is that she does yibam. The yibam does not need kavana. Uh, yibam is a bia, is a relation, is intercourse. So she doesn't have to have kavana. And then he will give her a get. So the chalitza 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 doesn't work. Bachalitza is the katan. Or let's say the, 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 it's uh, one of the yavams was under bar mitzvah. All these things are chalitza, so psula chalitza is not kosher. Now, katana, shechalitza, let's say she was a young girl that was married to somebody else. It could be a, a kedushin daraisa because let's say her father married her off to the brother that died. So then if she got the chalitza when she was under bas mitzvah, tachloitz mishetagdil, when she gets older, she should do chalitza again. Then so she didn't get chalitza again. Chalitza psula, chalitza is possible, and she probably can't marry somebody else, and she can't do yibam. Now, this is the Mishnah that we discussed before. Now, I want to point out to you uh, what we didn't mention before is that the halacha is by Aidim. Let's say a hundred witnesses come at one time, and one of them is found to be apostle. The whole hundred apostle. By the Yonim, we don't say such a thing. We know that you need three people to oversee the chalitza. So if you have four that oversee the chalitza and one of them turns out to be a gambler or something like that, so you still have three remaining. But here, Amish is talking about if you only have three and now one turns out to be a karv apostle. One of them turns out to be a karv apostle. So you're going to have uh, uh, one of them to, uh, one of them going to be a kosher uh, apostle and therefore now there's going to be only two. So chalitza also pesula, the chalitza is pesula. So chalitza b'shnai means you didn't start off with three, you just did two. But even if you started off with three and you turned out that one of them turned out to be a relative or a apostle, so now you have three minus one, you're back to two, chalitza also pesula, because you need three. One did it in jail. So the, the story was that in jail, there's somebody needed a chalitza. Rabbi Kivu happened to have been in jail at the same time, and he said it's kosher. So Rabbi Kiva, Rabbi Yechina Sandler, Rabbi Shimon, both all hold that you don't need three. Even one rabbi is kosher to oversee the chalitza. Amar Rava. Rava comes up with a new halacha. Amar Rava. Hashid the Amrit. Now that you said, Kuiya loy ma'akva. That you said that the reading doesn't is not uh, the most important. You can get by. So what's important? Chalitza, taking off the shoe, and spitting. But reading, saying the words in Hebrew, that's not ma'akiv. It's still going to be a kosher chalitza. Lefichach, therefore, Rava concludes, a, a, a person who can hear, but just has trouble speaking, if they did the chalitza, chalitza is kosher. The chalitza is kosher because you don't have to say the words. That's what Rava deduced from the Gemara. But now the Gemara asks a question. Tanan, Cherish, this deaf mute, which is somebody who's not normal. Shenechlas, that got Chalitza, but Cherish is a Chalitza, but Chalitza is a Chalitza is a Psula. Now, why is Cherish? Cherish, the Chalitza, why is it possible? So, why is it possible? 
So the Gemara says, uh, so the Gemara says that the reason is my timer. What's the reason? Lav mishum lav and a Korean in because they're not reading it. Uh, that's why it's not kosher. So we see, according to the way the Mishnah is learning now, that chalitza uh, would be ma'akev. So that's the question over here. The Gemara's question is that that how is it that you're saying that you must read it, but the reason why a cherish is puzzle is because he can't read it. So the Marsha says, no, the reason why a cherish is possible is because they're not normal and therefore it's possible. So, so the Gemara says, would you say a, a, a mute, somebody who can't speak is, is also not normal? No, the Gemara says, no. If someone can hear, he's normal. They're normal people. But they have a problem with their speech. So therefore, Rava stands by his statement that an Elam, somebody who just can't speak but could hear, he could do chalitza because reading it, reading, saying the mouthing the words is not as important. So the Gemara says, Rabbi Yanni explained the Mishnah of why Cherish is puzzle. He said it's because they're not mouthing the words. So according to the way Rabbi Yanni explained the Mishnah, it's not because they're not normal. It's because they didn't. They're not saying it. They're not. They can't. A cherish who's a deaf mute, he, so he has a double problem. He's not be able to say it. So therefore, Elen should also not be allowed to to do chalitza. So Rava Rava agrees, acquiesces to this uh, statement, and he changes around what he said. Rava was talking about the end. The deaf mute that dead chalitza, his chalitza is possible. Why? Because he can't mouth the words. That's why the deaf mute is the chalitza's possible. Now that you're saying unanimously that the Korea is very important, reading it is very important. Therefore, Therefore, an Elam and Elamis that did the Chalitza, the Chalitza is possible because they're not being able to mouth the words. So even though they can hear, but the fact is they can't speak and we need them to be able to have speech in order to make a kosher Chalitza. O Masnis in our Mishnah goes to Rabzera with the opinion of Rabzera. The Am Rabzera call Haroi Labila Ein Beila Ma'akavis boy. The Chal She'ein Roy Labila. Bila Ma'akeves boy. Our Mishnah, our Mishnah, who says that really um, the beginning of the Mishnah says that Kriya is not important. So why is, uh, and, and so who was that opinion following? That opinion is following Rab Zera. Rab Zera says, if you're a person that's capable of speech, if you're capable of speech and you didn't speak, then it's not a problem. Because since you could have done it, but you didn't do it, it's not such a problem. It's only when you can't do it at all, then, then it's a problem. So, for example, by a deaf mute or a, a, a mute, by, by just a mute, they can't speak at all. So, therefore, the chalitza would be puzzle. But if you have a regular person, a normal person who potentially could speak, but forgot, they didn't do the speech part of the chalitza, then it's kosher because potentially he could do it. And that's Rabzeir's opinion in Kachim, what has to do with Bila mixing of uh, Menachas over there. The Gemara says, Nu Gemara, Shochulei Lavudishmal, this is the last question of the Gemara that we're dealing with today, Yavama Shirakakov. Let's say they only did the spit. We said you have to do taking off the shoe and you have to take off the shoe and you have to spit, okay? And Kriya is not as important, we said. But let's say he, she only did spitting. So then, Kachalite, she must take off his shoe. But let's say she didn't take off the shoe. The cloud, the Ipasloma Achlan. At least, if she just spit and then walked away from the whole thing, y- Yibam is off the table, and it's like a Chalitza Psula. But it really did something. It is that if she did something, and therefore, none of the brothers can decide to Miabam her. Mani, who is our Mishnah going according to? Who did Avu uh, Adeshmuel paskin like? So the Gemara is going to conclude that he paskin not like Rabbi Akiva, not like Rabbi, not like Rabbi Laza, He paskin like Rabbi. Let's see. Eli me Rabbi Akiva. Would you say that he holds like Rabbi Akiva? Rabbi Akiva holds spinning is not even important. 
Ma the Maka Mitzvah. When you're supposed to do the spitting, the Ikid by Kachim. When you're supposed to do, the Gemara brings in Kachim over here because in Kachim it's very similar to y- Yibam because by Kachim, you're actually doing something on the Mizbeach in order to make a, ca- a carbon kosher. So also over here, you're doing trying to make a, a chalitza kosher. So by Kachim, we say, Ma bin koin mitzvah, the ikla name the have emram. The chiles nayu loim akva. When you, when you didn't put the, the stuff that you're supposed to burn on the Mizbeach, let's say they got tome. So but the Ebed, the carbon is kosher. It doesn't uh, stop the carbon from being kosher. But but if you're supposed to do it, and you could do it, but you didn't do it, ma'akvi, it stops the carbon from being kosher. But nevertheless, Omar Rabbi Akiva, loy ma'akva. Rabbi Akiva said that when you could do, uh, when you could do spitting, and and you didn't do the spitting, Rabbi Akiva says it's kosher. Spitting at all is is like nothing. So therefore, ma'achin ipasla. Would it? Would just spitting alone? Uh, make it like a, that she can't do Yibam anymore. According to Rabbi Akiva, what the Gemara is saying is that according to Rabbi Akiva, if you just spit alone, Rabbi Akiva holds it's nothing. It's not It's not even called a chalitza because Rabbi Akiva holds that if you took the shoe off and let's say you did the Kriya, you took the shoe off, even if you didn't do spitting, it's a kosher chalitza. So chalitza is a minor issue according to Rabbi Akiva. So certainly it can't uh, uh, invalidate the brothers from doing Yibam. The Ella Rablaza, would you say you're going to Rablaza? You need two things to make a kosher chalitza. What are the two things? Taking off the shoe and spitting. And according to Rablaza, if you do one without the other, it's nothing. If you need two things and you didn't, you only did one of them, then it doesn't, it doesn't effectuate anything. And Ella Karebi, it goes according to Rebbe, who says you do, even if you need two things, if you did just one, he did a, a quasi thing. Where do we th- see this in Rablaza's opinion, Rablaza or Rabbi? The Tanya we learned in the Brisa, Kifzi Aseris Emekachin Alechem El Beshita. There are certain breads that are brought with the Shvuas carbon, the sheep of the Shvuas, and in order to make that bread a holy bread, right? That's called the Lechem, the Shtei Alechem. You ha- the the animal has to be slaughtered as a shlaman in Parshas Emar. Kates. But what happens in order to shecht an animal? You need two things to make it a kosher carbon. You shecht it with the right intention, and you spray the dam with the right intention. So shecht on the shman, uzrak on dam the shman. If you did the shechita correctly and the sprinkling of the blood on the mezbeach, kadosh alechem, the bread is kosher. But what happens? Shochet shloy the shman. You did the shechita not with the right intention, uh, or you did it for another shlomim or something like that, but not for a shlomim of shvuas or vizarek the shman, or you sprinkled the blood the shman. But you didn't, uh, but so you shechted shloy lishman and you did sprinkling correctly. Loy kadosh alechem. The bread is not kosher. Shechten shloy lishman. You did the shechita correctly. So now you were yotze the carbon, but uzar dam shloy lishman. You didn't sprinkle the blood correctly. You didn't have the right kavana when you sprinkled the blood. So you did only one of the things. Kadosh vein kadosh. It works partially that that these breads become holy, but you can't eat them. They're like, a, like a, you can't take them out of the base of Middash. These breads are holy. So Rebbe, we see Rebbe holds that if you do one without the other, it's kosher. So Rebbe will hold. You need two things by a chalitza, spitting and taking off the shoe. Spitting enough will make a, a, a quasi chalitza, not a kosher chalitza, but enough to say that it's a, it's a chalitza that takes Yibam off the table. It puzzles the brother. So the author of Avu de Shmuel, who said that if you of Yavam that just spits, the brothers become puzzled. He was going with the opinion of Rabbi because Rabbi Lazar B'Shimon Oimah. Rabbi Lazar says Rabbi Lazar holds that it is the only time a carbon uh, the breads become kosher uh, have a din of kedusha is only if you shechted the animal and sprinkled the blood correctly. If you did one without the other, it's not kosher. So therefore, it doesn't become kedusha. So therefore, Rabbi Lazar will hold if you just did the spitting. And you didn't do the taking off the shoe, it's not even a chalitza anything. And Yibam is still on the table. So uh, Rabbi Laz, uh, Avu and Shmuel went with the opinion of Rabbi. Okay. So ends, as a Hashem, today's daf, daf kuf